10 5 day 2 now we'll look at the area between polar graphs so don't worry about writing this down but from chapter 7 we've already found the area bounded by two different functions the functions must be continuous and when we find the area we take the top function the function with the greater y values and we subtract the function that has the smaller y values now a and b can either be vertical lines that are defined or for polar and a lot of the functions you studied last year we had to find the points of intersection so the boundaries came from where the two functions were equal to each other so that's what this video is going to work on finding those points of intersection okay so first we have two polar graphs functions r is equal to 2 and r is equal to 2 cosine theta so just like rectangular we start by setting those two functions equal to each other okay dividing by 2 I get 1 is equal to the cosine of theta now where is cosine equal to 1 at 0 or 2 pi so the points of intersection we know our points are r comma theta so the radius here is given we don't have to worry about plugging it in and finding the value of r so the points of intersection 2 0 and 2 comma 2 pi because polar coordinates are not unique we know that they're at the same point so if this were a question on a quiz or a test or if we needed the points of intersection to find the area you only need one value for theta so looking at the two graphs r is equal to 2 is your graph in blue r is equal to 2 cosine theta is your graph in green and you'll see that there is only one point of intersection and 0 and 2 pi are not the only answers it could be 2 comma 4 pi 6 pi 8 pi but we generally stick between 0 and 2 theta okay setting these two functions equal to each other sine theta equals 1 plus sine theta okay attempting to solve for theta we get 0 is equal to 1 which we know is not a true statement so the method of setting the functions equal to each other we get no points of intersection but check out the graphs so in blue is the graph of r is equal to sine theta and in green is your 1 plus sine theta so we see that the functions never overlap each other but check out what's happening at the pole so here at 0 0 notice that there is a point of intersection so how do we determine that algebraically let's go back so for each function we need to check if the pole gives us a point of intersection so when I set sine theta equal to 0 I can get I know that occurs at 0 at pi at 2 pi so the sine function is equal to 0 for some value of theta setting the other function equal to 0 I get negative 1 equals sine theta and I know that this occurs at 3 pi over 2 so even though the values of theta are not the same because both functions intersect the pole so since both exist for r is equal to zero a point of intersection of these graphs would be the at the pole zero comma zero now we know if the radius is zero the value of theta doesn't matter doesn't necessarily matter because I'm not going anywhere from the pole so we'll say for us with these functions we always have to check at the pole if both functions give us a value of theta that exists when the radius is equal to zero then zero zero will be a point of intersection now just to go back to the first one real quickly we see that they definitely don't intersect at the pole and if I were to go back and check where r is equal to 0 plugging it into that function r doesn't exist 
excuse me, theta doesn't exist when r is equal to 0. So 0 comma 0 wouldn't be a point of intersection anyway. Okay, so for each of these, and I will give you the graphs of the ones we're going to do in class, but for each you need to check to see if theta exists when the radius is equal to 0. All right, so first we're going to set the two functions equal to each other. We get 2 cosine theta equals 1, cosine theta equals 1 half. So this occurs at pi over 3 for the first quadrant and 5 pi over 3 for the second quadrant. So this is an example of where now we need to find the value of r. So you can plug pi over 3 into either function, but cosine of pi over 3, we already know that's a half. So my two points of intersection here would be 1 half comma pi over 3 and then 1 half comma 5 pi over 3. So now let's check the pole. When 0 equals cosine theta, we get values for theta at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. 0 equals 1 minus cosine theta. We know the cosine is 1 at 0 and 2 pi. So again, both functions exist. when the radius is equal to 0. So we add 0, 0 as a point of intersection. Now checking out the graphs, okay, here's pi over 3, here's 5 pi over 3, and then zooming in, so you can see it as well, there's definitely a point of intersection at the pole. So what we're going to be doing in class is you're going to be finding you, let's say this area here, okay, between the two. Or we could say the area outside the graph of 1 minus cosine theta, but the interior of r is equal to cosine theta. So we could, you could be asked to find this area. But it all stems on first being able to determine the points of intersection. Okay, so to add it to your notes, if theta exists at r is equal to 0 for both equations, then 0, 0 is a point of intersection. And lastly, for homework, take these three functions. These are the three graphs we're going to look at in class, and you'll be given instructions of the overlap of the two regions. But determine the points of intersection. We'll check those first, and then we'll be able to determine the area. Graphs will be provided in class, so attempt to do it by setting the functions equal to zero and then checking the pole.